Good morning and welcome to the Mount Gilead Daily Devotion. Last week I finished up going through the letter to the Hebrews here on Friday mornings and and this week I kind of found myself somewhat adrift as I was preparing for this week's devotion. My neighbor here in the office, Ken, asked me what was the big thing that I learned out of the Hebrew study. For me it was a little more insight into John 3.16 and a little more understanding of the servant heart of Jesus. It's kind of hard to believe that it's May 7th already. A saying that you may be familiar with is, time flies as you get older. The fact is, the days are actually getting longer as the rotation of the earth slows down. A day today is actually a few milliseconds longer than a day a hundred years ago. The reason is that we perceive time getting faster as we get older has to do with your experience. Each day that you spend on earth becomes a smaller and smaller percentage of your experience. The day you were born was a hundred percent of your experience. Day two was fifty percent of your experience and the percentage gets less and less and less every day as you grow older. When I turned 50 a few years ago, that day equaled 0.0055% of my experience. So as I'm getting older and experiencing the reality of time slipping away, I want to fill my days being useful and productive and not wasting them. One way to be more productive is to learn from those who have gone before us. Back in my old job, before coming on staff here at church, we used to have these design reviews where we would have to present our design or our program status to a group of graybeards who would give us insight and advice on how to proceed. Here at the church, I'm also fortunate to be able to phone a friend when I'm stuck with construction projects or plumbing problems or HVAC issues. One of the great Bible characters wrote a couple books that are just filled with observations and lessons learned, and that's where we're going to camp out for a while. We'll spend some time with King Solomon and the book of Ecclesiastes. First off, let's review King Solomon's resume. He was the youngest son of King David. His mother was Bathsheba. When he became king, he prayed to God and asked for wisdom and knowledge. And because of this prayer, God granted him wisdom and knowledge, along with riches and wealth and honor, of which had never been seen or will ever be seen again. You can read about this in 2 Chronicles chapter 1. He ruled over over Israel for 39 years from 970 B.C. to 931 B.C. He also constructed the first temple in Jerusalem, which was completed around 957 B.C. He was the last ruler over a unified Israel as the nation split into Israel and Judah shortly after he died. You can study that in uh, 1 Kings chapter 12. You can find the short book of Ecclesiastes just after the Psalms and Proverbs. Solomon gets right to the point in chapter 1. After a brief introduction in verse 1, he uses the phrase, Vanity of vanities, and asserts that everything is vanity. The word vanity means worthless, or futile, or pointless. Then he asks the question, What advantage does a man have in all his work which he does under the sun? And then he proceeds to make the point that all your work is futile. The sun will rise and set, the wind will blow this way and that way, the rivers will flow, but the sea will not be filled up. And that which has been is that which will be, and there is nothing new under the sun. Then starting in verse 12, the wisest man to live says that even the pursuit of wisdom is pointless and likens it to striving after the wind. Solomon ends chapter 1 with the not-so-encouraging statement, Because in much wisdom there is much grief, and increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. Ouch! The lesson Solomon teaches me here in chapter 1 is that even the pursuit of noble things, like wisdom and knowledge, will just leave you empty. It reminded me of the hopeless Samaritan woman going to the well to draw water in John chapter 4. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up to eternal life. I'm looking forward to learning some life lessons from the wisest man that ever lived. This Sunday's Mother Day, Mother's Day, we'll have a photo booth set up in the lobby, and Jeff's going to be starting a new series. I hope you can join us here in the building. If not, you can join us online at either 9 o'clock or 1030. Have a great Friday. Look look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Bye-bye.